Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. So I'm having to re-record this episode because there was a song, some copyrighted music, when I had uh, recorded this video, and I couldn't change the volume. So YouTube picked up on it, and well, here we are. Um, I had to re-record it. So this, so uh, you're not going to be hearing much sound from from the the game itself because of that freaking song. And how loud it was. But anyway, guys, so please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Amicus grunts as he gets to his knees and stands up, looking at the ceiling as he turns in a slow circle. Looking for whatever Cass might have been doing. You know what he was doing? I have my suspicions. Which are? Amicus stops turning and looks at me, folding his arms. Well, I'm not sure, but a recording device, possibly. Or he was just snooping for information. Can we just ask Calm? No, his capabilities are very limited despite what his intelligence might suggest. He doesn't record our activities specifically so we can't spy on each other. Rules put in place millennia ago. I sigh and look at the door, still feeling a little shaken up at what had, had just happened. Why can't you lock the door or something? Amica shrugs. That's something only the Emperor can do. Again, rules that have been in place for a very long time. That doesn't feel safe. That doesn't seem safe. Well, only the most trusted are allowed in the palace, after all, which tends to be only family. Aside from Neferu. Aside from him, yes. You don't have much freedom for being the Emperor's son. You just noticed? Amicus huffs and stands in the middle of the room, his arms folded, a, frown, a, deep, a deep frown on his face. He was probably just trying to find out what you're planning for the next trial. We know some stuff about him already. Hmm. Amicus continues to look concerned. What is it? I just... Amicus lowers his voice. Worry it might have something to do with you. After what he said he was, after what he said as he was leaving, it left me uneasy as all. Oh yeah, that thing about executing me. I haven't had time to think about the possibility of someone on the verge of near absolute power wanting me dead yet. Do you think he was serious? Amicus is quiet for a moment. No, but obviously I'm not going to assume he wasn't. I won't even give him a chance at the Emperorship now. Cats knock it off. Biggie boy. I frown. And you were going to before? No, I'm just going to make extra sure now. I'm quiet, deciding to sit on the bed instead. I don't like that the situation has become a lot more serious than it already was. After a moment, Amicus comes to sit next to me, the depression he creates in the mattress forcing me to lean sideways into him. He wraps an arm around me. Don't worry about it at all. He has no chance, and besides, I wouldn't let him touch you. How would you be able to do that even if he's the Emperor, though? Well, I am, I am his older brother. Some relationships don't change, even if the official ones do. I stay quiet, unconvinced. Anyway, it would look awfully bad on his record. He just let his anger get the best of him. He'll quickly forget about the matter within the next, with the next trial coming up. Amicus squeezes me. And this is all assuming he'd win. He won't. That's what you said last time. And he, we had an unforeseeable mishap last time. There isn't much possibility for one of those to happen in this trial. We sit there a while longer, Amicus rubbing my shoulder with his paw. Despite my rising anxiety, it's comforting, and before long I'm leaning my head against his shoulder. <sighs> a week later, Amicus and I sit in the gardens, enjoying the cool, fresh morning air. So, what's your argu main argument? That Ad Astra has been on a steady rise politically and economically since the beginning of the Ad Astra policy era. Why take steps backwards when we're so clearly moving in the right direction? And Cassius? That Ad Astra's decline over the past few hundred years is due to that policy. Instead of looking outward to the children and other siblings, we should instead be looking inward to better ourselves. Amicus scratches his nose. Well, that's the basics, anyway. Obviously, there is much, much more to it. So, how are you going to counter that argument? It seems like a pretty good one to me. If the wheel of your chariot is caught on a stone, does that mean the campaign should be turned around and ended? He looks at me and I just stare back. Well, the answer is no. You simply need to give it a push. In other words? In other words, the downturn over the past 200 years is simply a stone in the road. Why throw away 10 millennia of progress due to a few centuries of light hardship? Besides, it was completely predictable. The war with the Kimians and the resulting end of diplomatic relations with the most of the other siblings caused it. We certainly can't have any leverage in the galaxy when the only siblings speaking to us are the cats. If we can fix those relations, we could be well on our way to prosperity again. Well, that and, uh, unstilt unstunting your children. Yes, that too. 
which I still can't believe you did. Again, it wasn't me. Anyway, that will also be part of my argument. Upraise the children fully as the partial uplift programs are now clearly a failure. And end the slavery. And consider the debts repaid. Yes. And debts that didn't exist in the first place, sure. Listen, Killian, I have to, be, you have to use very careful language so as to not upset the people. Not to mention the triumvirates. Feelings are sensitive at times like these and must be considered despite how tedious or untrue it can be. Amicus is right. The wolves are very sensitive when it comes to their culture and history. I'm starting to realize that their hubris is probably their biggest downfall. I lean back on the bench, starting to feel a little sweaty under the rising sun. Isn't that going to be Cassius's whole thing, though? Appeal to their feelings, throw out the etiquette, and get straight to the point? Possibly, but I'm confident my composure and consideration will win over the triumvirates. You ever considered not being so confident, maybe preparing for the worst? I'm confident that I'm prepared for the worst. I roll my eyes and Amicus glares at me. I don't understand why you're so insistent on projecting yourself onto me. Just because you aren't so sure of yourself doesn't mean that I should be the same. I frown. Ouch! Sorry, but I strongly believe in what I'm doing. How can I ever be an emperor if I'm not sure what I'm doing going to do is right? Sure, but all I'm saying is that you might not always be right, and you need to be prepared for that. Trust me, I'm learning as I go, and after the last trial, I'm preparing for everything. How are they even going to choose the winner? Wouldn't they just pick who they agree with most? Technically, no. They're supposed to choose the best performance, the most convincing and dramatic. Not very woven. Hmm. So you just have to convince a majority of the triumvirates? Well, yes, but Cato's vote holds twice the power of a triumvirate vote. So I need to at least so I need at least either four triumvirates or two triumvirates plus Cato. And what are Cato's beliefs? Amicus shrugs. He doesn't talk about them much, but again, it shouldn't matter. He's certainly right about Cato not talking much about himself, but that tends to be the way everyone is around here. I can tell Amicus isn't all that interested in talking about this though, so I try to think of something else. What started the war with the Chimians, by the way? Their ambitions got the best of them. They began to interact with some of our abandoned children, some of which were very close to Ad Astra. Oh, is that illegal or something? Well, technically not if they're abandoned, but it's never really happened considering if a species is abandoned, then, that, then that's a signal to the other siblings that the race is unupliftable. So there weren't, they weren't breaking any rules? Even if they weren't breaking laws, they were clearly provoking us by uplifting races just a few hundred light years away from our moon. They are an arrogant people. Nefru seems nice, always polite, Amicus smirks. Well, that's how they often get their way, a facade of niceties to pull you into their trap. Either way, the war was a draw, despite their technical advantage. Wolven tenacity beats Kimmy and Tech any day. Despite Amicus's more progressive view on things, views on things, he's not immune to Wolven hubris either, it seems. But I'm not in the mood to argue with him about that. You know, Nefru reminds me of a culture on Earth, the Egyptians. I wonder if they uplifted there too. Amicus looks down at me, then snorts. More likely to just share simple aesthetic aesthetics. Your people being uplifted twice while having no knowledge of the Galaxies is impossible. The Chimians rarely abandon anyway. Actually, I don't think they ever have. They tend to have the best of luck. Amicus stretches. Honestly, though, this talk is boring. This is my only day off before the trial next week. We should be doing something fun. Like what? Amicus looks around, then grins. Wanna practice Pugnu with me? No! Ah, come on! I know Amicus would go easy on me, but I really don't feel like getting sweaty and exhausted right now. Why don't we just go to the island and have a picnic again? Oh yeah, great idea. Can I lower it on this one? What, lower on this one? No, it won't. The volume is just... I, it just does not work. Okay. Well, if I have to, I will mute it. <laughs> oh yeah, great idea. Amicus grins and hops up, already making his way to the beach as he calls out to Calm to get the food ready. What the fuck did I do? What the fuck did I do? Oh god, I didn't mean to hit skip. Whoa, hey, hang on, guys. Whoa, let's uh, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, Lou, there you go. Okay, not too bad. Okay, all right, all right. Let's uh, yeah, let's get through that. Sorry about that, guys. Um, that was uh, I did not mean to do that. That's on me. That's on me. I'm sorry. All right, we're almost there. We're almost there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. Yes. We're almost to the finish line. Yes. 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 Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. With a sigh, I get up and jog after him toward the sightseer. I 
I stand on the beach, hands on my hips as I look out at the sparkling lake, the breeze that's coming off the water cool and soothing. At Astra City sparkles in the distance as well, making the tall structures look like they have a glass or crystal coating. I look back at Amicus, the wolf in the process of spreading out a blanket under the shade of the trees. You sure Kato isn't going to kick your ass for doing this again? I see the wolf's ears flick down for a moment. That was for missing an appointment. I don't have any today. I resist telling Amicus that it was about much more than a missed lesson, and instead I walk over to help him spread the blanket out more evenly. Thank you. Now, shall we eat? Amicus pulls... Nope, that is too loud. Guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to just mute this, mute this freaking game. Okay, I'm back. Alrighty, alright. Amicus pulls the cloth off the basket, revealing tightly packed and covered plates along with bottles of wine and Verdi. This time the food is a selection of wraps full of meat and cheeses along with chilled salted cucumbers. Amicus splays out in the luxurious Roman way as he pulls his plate, up, plate of food up next to his chest, immediately stuffing a whole wrap in his muzzle. I'm, I'm a bit more dainty instead, sitting next to the wolf cross-legged as I nibble at my own wrap. We eat in silence for a little while, Amicus gobbling up the majority of the food like always. I notice the wolf drinking more wine than he usually does, probably because it's his day off. After taking a particularly large swig, he points at my legs. I don't know how you're comfortable doing that, it looks like hell on the knees. Well, laying down like you are actually hurts my neck. I, I don't know how you do it for so long. I rub the left side of my neck as I say that, then carefully uncork the bottle of Verdi. Kato's the same way, but he's old. I take a sip of the cold drink that I've come to really like over the past few weeks. Speaking of Cato, what, who exactly is he? How did he become the acting emperor? I try circling us back around the conversation we had or we'd had earlier, wanting to know more about the wolf that's apparently ruling all of that Aster right now. Oh, well, he was the he was father's friend since childhood. He was the imperial legate during the Kimian War. Is that an important position? It's the highest rank in the military, aside from the emperor of the court, of course. He's credited with preventing outright defeat. Huh. Must be kind of weird for him to have Nefru walking around the palace. Another reason I wonder why Virginia brought him in the pet, brought him to the palace. Kato's scars aren't just physical. Physical? I take if you noticed the visor, yes. We lost an eye and part of his skull during the war. Eventually the other eye failed as well, and he had to go to our parent to have mechanical vision installed. Anyway, Nefru was born decades after the war, so I doubt Kato holds anything against him specifically. Is he alright with the alliance thing? Knowing of this about Cato makes me worry that he might not agree with Amicus on one of his most controversial policies. Alrighty. I doubt that, but I think he understands it's necessary for to begin re-establishing relations with the other siblings. Hmm. I feel my stomach turn a little as I realize he might he might we might be disadvantaged in this trial as well. Amicus, what's going to happen if you lose this next trial? Again, don't worry. I know you don't think it can happen, but if it does, what happens to me? Amicus frowns at me, a meat wrap halfway to his face before he sets it back down. First of all, I won't have you worrying about Cassius's words. What he said was out of anger, and besides, I'll have measures in place to stop it from ever happening. What measures? I'm, I'm not fully sure of that yet, but I will have them in place by the time the next trial comes. Very good measures. And aside from that, what do I do next? Amicus thinks. Like I said before... I'll ensure a way home for you. The problem is the illegality of you being here. The more people who know about it, the more likely a monitor may be alerted to what happened. I need to be very careful about who I let know about the situation. Okay. I look down at my food, suddenly having lost my appetite. Amicus sighs, stand, sounding annoyed. Come on, Killian. This is likely going to be your last few weeks here. Stop focusing so much on what's unlikely to happen. Let's enjoy ourselves a bit. The wolf suddenly sits up, brushing the crumbs off his fur before swigging down more wine. Come, let's practice combat. What? I said I didn't want to do that. Well, since you're so worried about Cassius, I'll teach you a few tricks to take him down. Take him down? Well, I don't trust him. I don't trust him to keep his paws to himself now. So if he ever tries to take advantage of you while I'm not around, you can at least hold him off long enough to get away. Yeah, and that won't make everything worse. Well, after what happened a few days ago, I suppose it can't get much worse. I slowly get to my feet, straightening out my robes. I'm not so sure about that. Besides, we just ate. Amicus laughs. It's not like you're Kato. I think I'll be able to keep my food and drink down. What about me? I'm not going to hit you or anything. Amicus, Amicus, is square, Amicus squares his stance, standing in, the, standing in the sand off to the side of the blanket, still in the shade. I sigh, recognizing that Amicus is in one of those moods where it's hard to talk him out of doing something. I look over to stand in front of the wolf, my arms folded. And about Kato, I could probably beat him in a fair fight. He just caught me by surprise the last time. 
I paused and raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? I mean, he started fighting No Holds Barred without a warning. I'd have given him the business the business if I'd known he were if I'd known he were going to do that. Hey, I don't think you any less for losing a fight to an old man. Amicus furrows his brow, the way he does when he's realizing that I'm teasing him. I'm serious. So am I. I mean, you almost had me the one time in the spaceship. You're real force to be reckoned with. Man, this is too loud. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, that's that's the song. That's the song I started playing. Okay. I had it I had the volume at four percent, and that was still audible. That is insane to me. <laughs> so am I. I mean, you almost had me with that one time in the space. I already did that. Okay. It's not smart to tease a wolf before a fight, human. I'm not teasing. Mm-hmm. And kicking an unsuspecting man in the balls isn't exactly a win in my book. It isn't mine. Clearly, speaking of which. Amicus suddenly steps forward, thrusting his knee up at my crotch. I can only watch in horror as it comes up fast, stopping just an inch from my groin. I must stand there for a moment before I gasp and stumble back, holding my nuts even though Amicus didn't make contact. What the hell? If you don't want Cassius to hold broken bones against you, go for the genitals. That should be enough to stun him. This goes for anyone else who might try to attack you. Annoyed, I make as if to do the same to Amicus, but he's already blocking. Ha! Yes, like that. Though, try to be a little more subtle. You telegraph your moves far too much. I stop struggling with the wolf, breathing heavily. Fine. Then as Amicus starts to drop his guard, I try to swat him in the crotch. He snatches up my hand immediately. Ah, better Killian, though you should try probably you should probably try something harder than a flowery slap. I try to shove the wolf away, but he steps to the side and gives me a shove as well. I trip over something, and it's not until I'm on my ass that I realize he'd stuck his foot out behind me. I look up at Amicus as he stands over me, the expression on his face showing me that he's trying very hard not to laugh. Dangle up his feet and you should be able to send him to the ground fairly easily. If he breaks any of his bones from the fall, then at least he can't say you did it intentionally. Amicus reaches down with a paw to help me up. I take it and he pulls me up easily, almost lifting me off my feet. This is great and all, but I don't see how this is going to help me. I wasn't even the one that broke his tail and he wanted to ki and he wanted me killed. Again, with me standing in his way, he won't ever get the chance to try anything, even if he intends to. This is only this is only to give you a chance to get away from him. Amicus brushes the sand off my robes. Besides, this is useful to any in any situation, not just for Cass. Yes. Amicus chokes on his last syllable as I ram my shoulder into him, grabbing at his legs to try and trip him up, kind of like how I saw Cato do to him in the amphitheater. Obviously, someone as small as me going up against a hulking wolf like Amicus is bound to fail, but the wolf does stumble back a few steps. Hey! Amicus chuckles, and I feel him let himself fall backwards to the sand. It reminds me of the last time we'd wrestled on the beach, except now I'd end up on top with my fall cushioned by his body, my face bouncing against his massive chest. Amicus grins at me. Oof! Not bad, not bad! With a little more force, you might be able to knock down someone as small as Cassius. I pinned the wolf down with my, my hands on his shoulders. Oh, please, I knocked you down fair and square! <laughs> this time, I'm the one to yelp on my last syllable, Amicus easily reversing our positions as he rolls, uh, rolls us both over. I find myself staring up at the wolf, his massive paws on my shoulders, his knees spread to either side of my thighs as he's careful not to rest his weight on top of me. Oh, dear, okay, I think we might be getting to a... Uh naughty scene so i'm gonna go ahead and save it right here guys yep you can look forward to more in the next episode thank you all so much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe ring that notification bell leave a super thanks or a tip if you can it always helps until the next video i love you all i'll see you next time Bye bye